welcome to another breakout session. This is breakout session number 46. We're on the road. We're calling this caged or free range. So stick around. This will be fun. Hello and welcome to breakout session number 46. This is called caged or free range. We're on the road today. We're in beautiful Sedona, Arizona. Uh, we're filming this today. I'm going to try to keep it as short as humanly possible. <coughs> Excuse me. There's lots of videos out there on the cage system, so this is going to be my quick take on it for you. We're going to take the five open chord shapes C, A, G, E, D, spelling caged, and we're going to show you how to play a C chord with all of those shapes. And then we'll see if we can find the scales that are underneath those shapes. So first we need to know where the root note is. So a standard C shape chord with a root on the fifth string, C note right here. Okay, that's a C chord, obviously. Then an A shaped C chord would share the same root. You'd bring your index finger up here to the C note on the fifth fret, and you'd bar those three strings right there, which would be like an A chord, only now it's a C chord. So after a C chord, we're also gonna, we can share this root, or we can share this fifth, or third, of the chord right here, but we can we can make a G-shaped C chord, and that's probably the most difficult to do. So we just take pieces of a G-shaped chord like that, right? Okay, that would be the G-shaped C chord. Then the E-shaped C chord. It's going to share the root on the 8th fret. Either one of the E strings is a C note. And we make an E shape. And we have an E shaped C chord. And then the next one is going to be the D shaped C chord. We would share this root right here, this C octave right here, on the 4th string, 10th fret and we'd make a D shape. And you could also make a C shape from there and go all the way up and start over again, okay? So can we find some scales beneath these different shapes? Well, I always see when I'm the open C shape C, I see this pretty standard C major scale right there that I've given you tons of copies of. And by the way, the materials will be down in the description for you with the C shapes, uh, with all the shapes all the way up the neck. So I see that scale right there. If I come over to this octave C right here, I can see another C major scale right here, but I can also see from the G shape, I can see the C major pentatonic scale coming out of that G shape chord. Then the E shaped C chord is going to be the second part of the C major pentatonic. Right here, that little box that we always talk about. Okay, and then there's the D-shaped arpeggio up here. And a scale right up there. So, if you can start to picture the shapes of the chords, then you can start to see the scales that are underneath them and the arpeggios. So we don't always play the full, <coughs> excuse me, we don't always play the full chord. 
We can play pieces of the chord. We can play arpeggios. Little arpeggio, C arpeggio right here. D arpeggio or C, but it's a D shape. So then we can connect other chords to these shapes too. So for instance, if we have the C, the A shape C right here, and we just have that little arpeggio there, there's an F chord in a D shape right here, and there's a G shaped, it's an E shaped G chord right here, or another D shaped G chord there. So these things are close by. We don't have to move all over the fretboard to play like a one, four, five. So you got a C, you got an F, you got a G, and you got a C. Or you could have a C, an F, a G, and a C. They're everywhere. <laughs> and the other beauty of this caged shape is you can take any one of the shapes and play a different chord with it. For instance, the E-shaped chord, obviously when it's played at the first fret, it's an E. When you bar it, it's an F. F sharp, G, all the way down the line. Same way with the A-shaped chords. Okay, so A, B flat, B, C, C sharp, D, all the way down the line, okay? And then these kind of chords here, which are like the bottom part of an E-shaped chord. So this would be like an F, a G, an A, B. So you don't have to play the full chord with all the six strings. You could just play pieces of it and you can start to see the scales that are underneath those shapes. And when you can start to see that, and I don't mean by looking at the guitar and seeing the shape, but if you can visualize the shape in your head and see that the scales that come from that shape are right there for you, I think it'll help improve your guitar playing. So hopefully, so, the, so it's caged, but as you learn, these shapes, you become a little more free range with what you can do with them. Okay, so that's my take on it today is uh, you've got the five major chord shapes that make up the cage system. You can play the same chord with any one of those shapes or you can play a different chord with any single one of those shapes. Okay, so hopefully that helps. We're going to see you in the next video. We're on the road now, so you never know where we might be coming from next. So talk to you later. Bye.